This is the story of me getting four rejections from universities to getting four A stars in my A-level chemistry, mathematics, biology, and physics. 25th of January, 2022. This is the day in which I got rejected from Cambridge and I still vividly remember this memory of mine because this is the first out of my four medical school rejections in the UK. Wait, is that oh, it? Yeah, yeah I thought no, no, no one was to break. No, I don't know why you were eating. Come on, Jason. You put it on the Cambridge chart that you got in. Robinson Jason. is there, mate. Oh. Thank you for your application. It's open it. Jason, I got it, unfortunately, so... Uh... Let's open it. Oh, wait. What does it say? If it's no, unfortunate. No, I got rejected. Oh. And, yeah, at that time, my, my whole identity was built on, well, getting to Cambridge. I've been studying so much. I've been reading around medicine so much. I've been just preparing for the Cambridge medical application process, especially the medicine application process, doing BMAT and UCAT, as well as interview training for my Cambridge interview and my other medical schools interview, etc. So I did refresh my email and there it is. The email popped up, Robinson College, Cambridge, that's the college that I applied to. So I read, dear applicant, and then obviously the first sentence never reads out your rejection letter, but thank you for your application to Robinson College for entry in October 2022. We have had time to study all our application in detail. I regret. And then I just had a breakdown. I saw my I regret and I knew instantly that was a rejection. So uh, that was a tough week for me and it got tougher and tougher as I got rejected from further medical schools in the UK, ultimately getting no medicine offers. It was a tough time, however, I still managed to get out on top by just staying motivated despite not getting any offers. A couple of my friends had the same scenario as me, so thankfully I'm not walking alone in this path. I just decided to forget about it and just study really hard for my A-level exams. Skip forward to all my exam revision planning, the two months of hell, revising, going to 9 a.m. exams, 1 a.m. 1 p.m. exams, nearly every single day, revising my butt off during half term, skipping forward to all that after my summer holidays. is my result day, which is the 18th of August, 2022. My family and I were really, really nervous, especially my mother, and I believe that I studied what loads like I, I just grinded so much for these exams like I would again would go down a path of depression if I did not get what I achieved similar to what happened to my medical school applications I remember distinctly 8 a.m. UK time and me and my mom was just looking at the computer screen through our student portal and I'm just literally pressing my refresh refresh button. I got all my tabs open, I got the Great Boundaries website open, the results uh, day open, the UCAS website open, the clearing website open, etc, etc. And I just press refresh, refresh, refresh and and this is what happened. <laughs> So yeah, I got four stars when I convert to UMS score for all four of my A-levels, I actually got an average of above 95% in all four of my A-levels, which sounds crazy to me, but also, in a way, I felt like I deserved it. With the amount of hard work I put in, it's probably the most amount of work I've put in my life, obviously not counting medical school in my future. I want to pass on what, what I did, what I did exactly all the amount of resources and tips I've gathered up, all my revision experience, go through the ultimate revision pipeline for getting A stars and A levels. So this will be three steps, learn, memorize, and practice. So without further ado, let's get into the ultimate revision pipeline. Step one, be Asian. <laughs> I'm joking. Step one, learn i did science subjects so there's a huge bunch of content that you need to know or if you're if you're doing mathematics you need to learn all the skills that you need to know so depending on what subject you're doing you either have to learn a skill or the content required so for me especially the science subjects i mean i make sure i understand the content first before i'm shoving it into my brain before any lesson in school 
I highly, highly recommend you read ahead on what the teacher is about to teach you. So if you don't know what the teacher is about to teach you, obviously ask ahead after your lesson and ask simply ask your teacher what's our area of focus in my next lesson. So I would always flip to the the area in my textbook. And so in this case, I use the CGP textbooks as well as the official Oxford textbooks for all my sciences and the Edexcel textbook for maths. And I'll just flip through to that area of inquiry. So for example, this could be respiration. And I would just flip through, read through it, have a sense of what the content is like. I even went above and beyond and I made notes on that particular subject content, even before the teacher actually got onto it. So I, my main workflow was using my iPad with GoodNotes. So during my secondary six, uh, sixth form career, I heavily, heavily used my iPad and it was an awesome investment. And if you do want to check out my chemistry biology physics notes, which I spent two years in constructing, you can check it out at factorygo.com where you can just download all my notes for free there. Instead of done the notes for that particular content, uh, which will be covered in class, I actually go to class and then attend the lesson. And then it actually works magically because the lesson itself is not where you do the learning process, but the lesson is where you review your learning. So when the teacher goes through the content, for example, respiration, come more naturally focused onto the lesson, but it's something that's not completely brand new to you, but it's something that you know, and you actually have that sense of excitement that you know that content. And this is certainly a feeling that I've experienced quite a lot uh, when I preview the content before the lesson. And for some of my subjects where my teacher sometimes couldn't be bothered to teach, where we just simply have to self-learn, look through the textbooks or revision guide that you prefer, watch videos on YouTube and try to learn the content and understand it. Any questions, you could always ask your teacher in person or if your teacher's not available, just Google it. The internet is such a vast resource and there's a lot, a lot of resources out there on the internet. You, you really should make use of it. And again, if you want to make use of it, factorycall.com is another resource you could use. And after you successfully learnt and understood that content, it is time where you have to actually put it in your memory. And that is a step two of the process, which is memorize. So you may ask why I have to memorize like ahead of time. Like for example, during September of upper six, what's the point? Because the exams are in June or July. So I utilize the method of active recall and space repetition. And in particular, using the app called Anki, which is a flashcard app, which utilizes those two study methods. In GTSE, I realized that cramming is what pretty much 90% of the population does. And even myself did. I did cramming in my GCSEs and I just crammed for the content. It worked really well for my GCSEs because each individual subject doesn't have that much content in it. And before there's before the exam of that content, for example, paper one of GCSE, you could just read through and just memorize, put it in your short-term memory of that GCSE paper content. However, for A-level, this cannot work at all because just of the vast amount of content you need to learn and memorize. So I made sure throughout my sixth form career, at the start of lower six even, that I build flashcards and notes and make sure I catch up to the content syllabus and the content that my teacher has laid, laid out a road path for us to learn that each lesson where we go through a particular topic in which I've made notes upon before the lesson and during the lesson, I would convert those into flashcards. For example, again, using my example of respiration again, where we had to memorize the steps of respiration, like the electron transport chain and each individual steps. So for example, step one, NADH and FADH, release electrons onto the electron transport chain and they go down a series of redox reactions, pump protons back into the mitochondrial matrix through ATP synthase, uh, which powers the generation of ATP from ADP and PI. And the final step is where oxygen is a terminal electron acceptor in the process, etc., etc. So these are the steps, these are the content you must memorize for your exam. You can't just skip it and you can't just memorize it before the exam because there's just so much of these. This is just one particular process, but there's just so much of it that you need to know that it's impossible to cram it before your exams. So for example, in September of upper six, where we went through this particular topic, I would convert it into flashcards into Anki. And Anki is great because it utilizes the active recall and space repetition framework. So active recall is where you try to test yourself instead of just blindly writing notes 
and for example, highlighting textbooks, which is passive learning. Active recall is where you actively try to retrieve the memory out of your brain by simply doing questions, making questions yourself, for example, what are the steps in the electron transport chain? And you're trying to remember and recall what it is by trying to answer that question. This is particularly useful because that's how you're gonna be testing the exam. It could be a six marker on the electron transport chain where you just simply have to recall the facts or it could be an um, applied scenario where you're trying to apply the knowledge. But again, you still need your knowledge in your brain. So active recall really utilizes an active form of learning and try to stick that knowledge particular in your brain by just testing yourself. So in other words, active recall is simply just testing yourself constantly and flashcards is a way to do that because there's a question and an answer at the back. And the second part of this process of memorization, which I mentioned is spaced repetition. And I cannot stress how important it is if you've not heard of it. Space repetition is where you space out your revision methods, complete opposite of cramming. And space repetition really does utilize, is useful when you space it out over, for example, two years of your sixth form career, which I have done. And every single day, the program Anki would give me a certain amount of flashcards to do, depending on how I rated each flashcard to be. So for example, for glycolysis, and if I could not recall the process completely when I do that flashcard, I would rate it as hard, and it'll pop up again today and tomorrow. However, if it's something that I really, really know, like for example, protein structure, then I can rate it good, and it would appear less and less for me. The algorithm utilizes the concept of the forgetting curve, where it tries to give you the question as a time that you're about to forget the information. For example, a month later, you would have probably nearly forgotten the information you've learned about it, and you'll get the card again in the program, assuming that you do every single card every single day, which I'll get, which, which I'll get into later. And the algorithm, and when you try to recall the fact, it'll be harder for you to retrieve the information. Once you can retrieve that information very concisely, your memory of that particular chunk of information just solidifies and that really, really allows you to memorize specific content for a longer period of time and really does stick to a long-term memory inside your brain. In terms of Anki and the logistics of it and how you use it, I will make a video about that soon on this channel. When you're doing Anki, you have to stick to a daily routine of reviewing every single day. If you don't do that every single day, you completely miss out the point on the long-term review, the space repetition and the active recall. Because if you, for example, I had a mistake of just simply reviewing thousands of flashcards before my exams, instead of obviously spacing it out where Anki suggests you to do. So every single day at the start, your Anki dashboard will show you the amount of cards to do. For example, it could be 20 new cards, it could be 50 learnt cards and 20 more new cards. And you have to, you have to go through all those cards every single day. So when I got near to my final exams, my review count got up to, for example, something ridiculous like 400 cards per day. So it'll take me something like four to five hours to actually even go through all of them because I get them wrong and you know, I have to relearn them, etc., etc. But still, I kept up that routine of just doing it every single day and over the long run it's very effective to grasp such a large amount of information and to know and stick that in, in the long term memory so throughout my two months of exam schedule I still um, managed to able to recall that information very clearly in my mind. So now let's move on to step three which is the practice section and I cannot stress the importance of this. Even if you're simply remembering the facts of all you need to know, you still need to know how you can apply those facts that you've learned into the exam. And this is even more important for, for skill-based exams such as mathematics, where it's obviously less facts you need to know, but more skills you need to apply. So you simply, the number one thing to do in this practice section that I'm telling you, if you obviously you're ignoring any of my other advices, the number one advice I'm gonna take for you to take home is to do past papers. Do as much past papers as you can, do as much past paper questions, topic-based questions, past paper practices 
for your exam, throughout your year, throughout sixth form career. And there's so much past paper resources available. If you run over the new spec questions, you can always uh, go back to the old spec and they go back to something like 2003. For me, I even made a past paper tracker before my final A level exams where I just tracked my progress from my past papers, what I got, my scores, how I can do well. And I tracked it all from the new spec to the old spec questions. And I was a bit of ambitious. I put it all the way back to like 2009 or something ridiculous. And I thought I could do it all, but I still couldn't finish it all before my exams. So it just shows that there's just lots and lots of past paper questions to do. And you really shouldn't hold back on doing it. And if you do run out of questions, there's even more questions online. For example, mock paper, the mock past paper questions, the CGP past paper questions, the CGP exam practice booklet. There's just so much resource for you to practice questions. And it's the number one thing because it utilizes the framework of active recall. Again, in this case, we're not using flashcards, but we're using real exam based scenarios, which is what you're gonna experience in your real exam. In your real exam, you will have flashcards to do, but exam type questions and it, it really is another type of skill because doing these practice questions i assume many of the teachers have told you is it reinforces your exam technique of nailing your answers into a concise form factor where it can fit into the lines required in the exam paper but also achieving all the marking points in that bizarre mark scheme required so do as much past papers as you can if there's one step in this whole revision pipeline that you're skipping if you don't want to learn if you don't want to memorize just do past paper questions because doing them allows you to also learn the content identify which part of the syllabus that you're weak in and then naturally you're actually learning the content through the questions as well and there's also one thing i want to uh, point out is that after doing past paper questions if you want to go above and beyond, you can convert the past paper questions into flashcards, which is obviously a loop of learning. So you do learn, memorize by using flashcards and past paper questions, and then it goes back to step two by making flashcards. And this is an infinite loop that you're gonna do. So after you've something, for example, gotten something wrong in the past paper question, you simply, I, what I do is I simply make a flashcard in Anki, and then screenshot the question and screenshot the mark scheme. So now the next time I know what exactly to say if that question pops up again in a different past paper or if that question, if that similar style question pops up, which believe me, science questions are constantly recycled. So it is very, very useful. Review your mistakes as well and also put the mistakes into flashcards. If you want any of my notes in mathematics, chemistry, biology, physics, you can always check it out and download them for free at factrecall.com, which is linked down below in the description. I will make more videos on each subject specific tips on achieving A stars in mathematics, chemistry, biology, and physics individually and resources in each specific subject. And stay tuned for those videos by just pressing that subscribe button down below. I hope this video gave you some value. Please exchange some value by just simply pressing that subscribe button and click here for another one of my awesome videos. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Hasta luego.